So you read the title. By the end of this video, we're gonna have this Pong game made with Python and Pi game. The GitHub is in the link in the description, so you can go ahead and download the project if you want to see it for yourself. Now, without further ado, let's get into the video. So as you can see, I've started out with a Python script that has a little bit of Pygame boilerplate on it, and I'm not going to go ahead and type this out. I've actually left a pastebin link in the description. So if you head over to this pastebin link in the description, you're going to find the boilerplate that you can go ahead and copy and paste into your script. So now that we're back in our code, we can go ahead and implement the paddles. So we're going to have two paddles, which are going to be the opponent paddle and the player paddle, and both of them are just going to be white rectangles. We're going to be able to move our paddle up and down on the screen, and the ball should bounce off of it. So to create the paddles, I'm going to firstly label a comment up here above the while loop, and I'll call it paddles. Now here, we're going to create our player paddle first. So we'll say player is equal to pygame.rect. And we're going to have to pass in some parameters. Firstly, we're going to have to pass in the x position of the player. And this x position is actually the x position of the left side of the player. So we want the left side of the player to be on the far right side of the screen. So for this, we're going to say width minus 110. And for our top position, we're going to say we want the top of the rect to be on the center of the screen. So we can go ahead and say height divided by two. And we have to take into account that we're talking about the top of our rect and not the center. So we need to subtract 50 to align the rect perfectly to the center of the screen on the Y axis. Next, let's go ahead and implement the width and the height, which will be 10 and 100 respectively. We can go ahead and duplicate this by pressing shift alt down in VS code and replace this with opponent for our opponent rectangle. And we can change the left position to be 110. Now we have both of our rectangles created and we can go ahead and go into our while loop to actually put the two rectangles on the screen. So above pygame.display.update, we're going to say firstly pygame.draw.rect and we have to pass in a couple of parameters. The first is the surface that we want to put our rectangle on and in our case that's going to be the screen. So we're going to pass in screen. Next we have to pass in the color we want the rect to be. We obviously want it to be white so we'll say white. And lastly we're going to put in the actual rect we're talking about which is player in this case. Once again we can duplicate this with shift alt down arrow key and replace this with opponent. Let's go ahead and run this and see what we get. Now as you can see we have our player rect over here and we have our opponent rect over here. Now let's go ahead and implement the movement. So back in the while loop, we can check for what keys we're pressing. So the way we're going to do this is by getting all the keys that we're pressing at one time. And we're going to do this through the pygame.key.getPressed function. This function returns a dictionary and it contains all of the keys on your keyboard and it contains a boolean variable storing whether or not that key is being pressed. If the value is true, then we are pressing that key and if it's false, we're not. So for example, if I was pressing the up arrow key, then inside of the dictionary under pygame.up, we would have a value of true. If I was pressing the up arrow key and the down arrow key, then in the dictionary under pygame.up and pygame.down, we would see true on both of them. So let's go ahead and access pygame.key.getPressed, and we're going to do that as the first thing in our while loop. So let's go ahead and say keys pressed, which will be our variable, is equal to pygame.key.get pressed. Now we can check for each specific key that we want. Firstly, let's check if we're pressing the up arrow key. So down here, let's say if keys underscore pressed at the position in the dictionary of pygame.k underscore up. So basically, if we're pressing the up arrow key, then what we should do is we should move the player up by two. So we're going to say player dot top minus equals two. So basically we're subtracting two from the top value, which moves our players 
paddle up by two. The reason subtracting moves up in Pygame is because Pygame coordinate system works where if you increase the Y value, you move down, and if you decrease it, you move up. Now we should keep in mind though that we don't want the player to move up off the screen. So we'll have to put in an upper limit by saying if player.top is greater than zero. So if we're not already at the top of the screen, then we can move up by two pixels. We can do the same thing with if keys pressed at Pygame dot k underscore down if this is true then player dot bottom plus equals two so we move down by two and we only do this if player dot bottom is less than height so if we're not touching the bottom then we move down by two pixels let's go ahead and run this and see if it works now i have my game and let's try moving down now, as you can see, what happens when we move down is our position doesn't look like it's changing. It just looks like the rect is getting longer, but our position is actually changing. We're just not deleting the old position. If I move up, the rectangle is also going to get longer. Now, there's a super simple fix to this, and that's just to add a screen dot fill black every time we update the position of our paddle. So right here, let's go ahead and say screen dot fill black and run our code again and actually this should be screen as uppercase. Let's run our code again. Let's try moving up. As you can see, it moves up normally. And if we do the same thing with down, we also move down normally. Let's try going off the screen. As you can see, we're not allowed to do that. If you go in the other direction, we're also not allowed to go off the screen. So everything's working. And now we can go ahead and implement the ball. So right here underneath our paddles, let's go ahead and add another comment for our ball. So we're going to say ball and we're going to create it here. Let's say ball is also equal to pygame.rect. And we're also going to have to pass in our left position and our top position. And our left position is going to be the center of the screen on the X axis minus 10, which aligns it perfectly to the center and also the center of the height minus 10. We're going to pass in the width and the height as 20. And we're also going to create two speed variables for the X speed of the ball and the Y speed of the ball. Let's go ahead and say X speed comma Y speed is equal to one comma one. Basically how this works is if our X speed is one, then we move to the right. And if it's negative one, we move to the left. If our Y speed is one, we move down. And if it's negative one, we move up. All right. So right here, we're going to update the position of the ball. We're going to say ball.x plus equals x speed. And we're also going to say ball.y plus equals y speed. Now, this is optional, but I found that if we multiply the y speed and the x speed by two every single time, we get a better result. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So times two. Now we can draw our ball on the screen. So underneath our two rectangles, we'll say pygame.draw.circle. Once again, we'll have to be referring to our screen. The ball is going to be white. The rect we're referring to is ball.center. And finally, the radius of the ball is going to be 10 pixels. Let's go ahead and run the code and see if we get the ball on the screen. As you can see, we had the ball on the screen, even though it flew off. We had the ball on our screen and it moved down and right. Let's go ahead and see it again. As you can see, it moves off the screen. Now we have to implement the ball logic, which prevents the ball from moving off the screen and also tells the ball what to do when it hits one of the paddles. All right, so right here, we're going to implement the ball logic. The first thing we need to check is if the ball moves down off the screen. So if ball dot Y is greater than or equal to the height of the screen. So if it's touched the bottom or it's went off the bottom, then we should revert the Y speed to negative one. So it'll just bounce off the bottom of the screen. Now, conversely, if ball dot Y is less than or equal to zero. So if it's touched the top of the screen, then Y speed is equal to one. Now let's check if ball dot X is less than or equal to zero. So if it's touched the opponent's side of the screen, then first of all, the player should get at a point. So let's make a new variable called player score. 
and let's say player score plus equals one. Now, obviously we haven't created this variable. So up here, we can go ahead and say player score, comma opponent score is equal to zero comma zero. Now back in our ball logic, we can say ball dot center is equal to width divided by two comma height divided by two. So this just puts the ball back in the center if we gain a point. We're also gonna be making the X speed and the Y speed of the ball random if we've scored a point. So to do this, we can say X speed comma Y speed is equal to random dot choice. And random dot choice just takes in a list of numbers or values and chooses a random element from that. So we can pass in one and negative one for our X speed. And we can do the same thing for our Y speed. So let's go ahead and copy this, paste it right here. So our X speed is random dot choice one and negative one. And our Y speed is the same thing. Now let's repeat this logic, but check if the opponent has scored a point. So if ball dot X is greater than or equal to the width, then opponent score plus equals one. So the opponent gets a point. And we can go ahead and copy this bit of code because it does the same thing. Now let's go ahead and run our code and see what happens. So as you can see, the ball bounces off the bottom of the screen and off the top of the screen. And when it hits our side, then it goes back to the middle and it chooses a random direction. So all of the code that we implemented is working. But as you can see, if I try to stop the ball like that, the ball just goes right through me. And for that, we have to implement more logic to check if we're hitting the ball with the paddle. So right under here, we can say if player dot X minus ball dot width is less than or equal to ball dot X and ball dot X is less than or equal to player dot X. So if the ball hits the player on the X coordinate and ball dot Y is in the range of the top of the player minus ball dot width comma the bottom of the player plus the width of the ball. So if all of those conditions are true, if the player is touching the ball on the X coordinate and the Y coordinate, then we should say X speed is equal to negative one. Now this was a really long if statement, but I found that it did the job and we can go ahead and copy it for the opponent and replace player with opponent here. And here, here, and finally here. We're also gonna have to change this to one. And now we're done with the ball logic. Let's go ahead and run this and see if it works. Oh, and as you can see, I forgot a colon at the end of that. So let's go ahead and add one right here and one right here. Now, if we run this again, if I try to hit the ball, <laughs> if I manage to hit the ball, as you can see, it works perfectly and it deflects the ball. Let's wait for it to come to our side again. And let me hit it again. And the same thing happens. Now, we almost have a fully working game of Pong, but as you can see, the opponent is a little slow. And the reason for that is we haven't implemented any sort of AI. So that's what we're going to do right now. Now you may be thinking there's no way we're going to implement an actual AI in this Pong game. And you're sort of right. We're not going to be doing anything with machine learning, but we are going to be using the power of if statements. So we're going to check if the ball is below the opponent, then we should move closer to the ball. And by we, I mean the opponent. And if it's above the opponent, then we should move closer to the ball. Let's go ahead and do that with two if statements. Firstly, let's go ahead and say, if opponent dot y is less than ball dot y, then opponent dot top plus equals one. And if opponent dot bottom is greater than ball dot y, then opponent dot bottom minus equals one. And believe it or not, that's our entire AI done. Let's go ahead and run this. And as you can see this time, the opponent actually moves and the AI isn't that good. It's still 
not the best Pong player I've ever seen, but it does the job and I think it's good enough because at least it gets the ball sometimes. Rarely, but sometimes. Now we're actually almost done with the game and you can actually go ahead and leave the video here, but I'm gonna go ahead and add the score system that we created earlier with some text objects. So let's go ahead and do that. So basically right here, we're gonna create two text objects. The first one is gonna be called player score text, and it's gonna be equal to our font, which we created in the boilerplate dot render. We're gonna pass in player score true for anti-aliasing, you don't have to worry about that. And the text color is gonna be white. Let's duplicate this and do the same thing with opponent score text and change this to opponent score. And those are our two text objects. But what we should do is we should convert the player score and the opponent score to a string so Pygame can actually read it and use it as a text object. And now we actually have our two text objects completely done. Let's go ahead and put them on the screen by saying screen dot blit player score text. And we're gonna blit it to the width divided by two plus 50 and 50 on the Y axis. Duplicate this, replace this with opponent score text and change this to minus 50. Now that we've made all of those changes, let's go ahead and run our code. And as you can see, we have a score system that's on the top of our screen. If I score a point, then it increases by one, as you can see. And if I concede a point, well, if I try to concede a point here, okay, I'm just too good at this game. Okay, if I try to concede a point, as you can see, the opponent also gets a point. So now we have a fully completed Pong game, and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you made it this far, you probably enjoyed it, so consider pressing the like button for more content like this. And if you really liked it, consider subscribing to the channel to see more videos like this once every week. I hope to see you in the next video, but until then, have a good day.